Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. This is going to be a, <laughs> I'm reading a little heavy, it's going to be a sit and talk. Um, cut down a big tree and I'm still working on the tree downstairs. So, give me a second. Victoria, have a seat. Sit. Stay. She walks, the noise, <laughs> it makes a lot of noise on the camera. So it's going to be, I want to talk about three things and then I want to do an update for the ministry. So. The talk for this one is what's been going on. Uh, King James Video Ministries made a couple videos, and one of them, the first one we'll talk about is Lawson, about how he said has come in the flesh versus is come in the flesh. And I made a few comments under there, and I got dragged into the, I, I'm guilty, I got dragged into the debating and arguing a little bit. And bottom line, what I've seen on the comment section is you got a lot of people making excuses. And we'll get to King James Video Ministries because I'm about to, I'm going to show that I don't worship a man and I don't make excuses for Brother Brian when I believe he's wrong. In fact, I've made comments before in the comment section when I disagree with Brother Brian. So right now I see a lot of people making excuses. Um, and a lot of people thinking that we're, those of us that are agreeing with Brian saying, yeah, he said has come in the flesh, yes, it's a serious error, um, he needs to repent and make a video about it. A lot of people think that we were attacking the study itself. Okay. And they'll try to use that to cover up what Lawson said. Uh, Charles Lawson, I think, is his first name. If I'm wrong, please forgive me. Um, and that's not it. We're, like I said, it's excuse after excuse after excuse they're going to make for him. One of the excuses someone made for him under there was that he's getting old and he's getting for forgetful and everything. And it's like, I hate to say it like this, but I'm going to say it like this. Basically, they're saying he's old and senile. And he's not, don't get me wrong, he's not old and senile, but that's one of the excuses someone was trying to use. And it's like, if that's the case, and it's not the case, he's not, um, he shouldn't be behind a pulpit. So why would you use that as an excuse for him? Okay. Um, some people were basically, like I said, all, it's just a slip of the tongue or something and, and this, and it's like, uh, I'm just repeating, I mean, you go in there and look at my comment, um, I've made mistakes. I've slipped at the tongue, I've had to make correction videos when it's not that major, and there's times where I've done videos where I've recorded the video like twice, three times, and when I go over the video I realize I screwed up, said something that was, that was really wrong, like that's not right, um, or I feel like I left something out or something, but mainly we're going off the topic of saying something that's wrong, I won't put the video out. I've even taken videos down real quick that I put out because there was something that God just said, that's not right. Okay. Um, I'm kind of, like I said, uh, off and on for a year, new to the ministry, so I'm, I'm kind of a babe in ministry versus I'm not a babe in Christ anymore, even though I like milk. I still go back to milk, and I'm on meat now. Um, but there's people just making excuses left and right, and it's just all these people for Charles Lawson, and, and I'm not against him per se, because I don't know much about him. The videos I've seen about him say, give me a red flag and say, wait, you know, being, uh, I don't know, the one video about Catholics where he was saying, gosh, I can't remember his name, the first pope, and it wasn't Peter. I'm talking about the actual, what the, their actual physical first pope was, and it wasn't Peter, saying that he was saved. Uh, I can't remember if it was Constantine or something. But I saw that and went, uh, that's a red flag. And I've talked to people who do, that I do believe are saved, that have followed his ministry for a little bit, said he's starting to turn, become Catholic friendly. Um, you know, I can't remember if they said he's saying Catholics are saved or just being Catholic friendly instead of being straightforward, hardcore, they're lost, they need to get saved. It's a satanic uh, religion, you know, that kind of thing. And then he comes out and says this, but the whole point is, is that these people are making excuses for him. Uh, if Brian came out and said that, I wouldn't be making excuses for him. Now, I would have emailed him privately and said, hey brother, you're wrong. I probably would have um, quoted the scripture under the comment section and said, I quoted the scripture and it says, hey brother, it says is come in the flesh, not has. Like not accusing him of purposely doing it or something like that. But I would have still corrected him. I, and if somebody would have come to me and said, hey, Brother Brian said such and such, I wouldn't be making excuses for him. I'd be like, you know what, you're right, that's wrong. And I would have confronted him. 
Now I don't know how to confront uh, Lawson other than leaving a comment under his video. And there's a few of us that left comments under his video. I think two people. And out of, I mean, when I first looked at the video and was shown the video before Brian put that out, uh, I had someone send me to it, and I went ahead and made a comment. I quoted scripture and said, this is the right saying, saying has come in the flesh is the Bible versions, perversions, and that that, pr that proves the Antichrist spirit. Uh, is come in the flesh proves you don't have the right Antichrist spirit. I didn't accuse Lawson or anything. I just threw that up there. And when I went through, I, I decided for the fun of it, I'd go back and look through all his comments. And I looked through all his comments, and... Only one person before me, only one person, called him out on it. And the person that linked the video for me, um, he didn't make a comment. So only one person dared to call him out on it. And that's the part that gets me, um, that's going to get to one of these things. So I made, someone made a comment that Charles Lawson said in uh, previous videos that Jesus is come in the flesh. And I was like, okay, I'd love to see it. Not because I'm being mean about it, but I was like, I'd love to see it because then it means he made a mistake. You know, he slipped up. And, or two things, either he slipped up and made a mistake, or maybe he's starting to fall away. But I, I'd lean more towards if that's the only time he ever said has come in the flesh, that he might have slipped up. So the guy said that he had videos in the past where he said is come in the flesh. And I was like, in my head, and I was like, okay, this would be a good thing. So all I typed in there was, is could you link some of the videos? That's all I typed in there is, could you link some of the videos? And the person, when he responded back, boy, did he blow up at me and just went off on me. And I'm like, okay, you made a statement, and all I asked is if you can link the video. There's times, brothers and sisters in Christ, you've seen me in my videos where I say, hey, this video, and I'll do my best to link the video in the comment sec or in the description box of the video. And there's times where I said, hey, I mentioned this video, and I can't find it. I can't remember what video, and I can't find it. So if he came back with the answer of, hey, I, I tried to look for it, and I just couldn't find it. I can't remember what video it was. I'd have been okay with that. I would have come back saying, You're, then you lied, then you lied. I'd have been like, okay, I've done that before. But he came back attacking me, and he, he basically mocked my appearance, but he did it in a political way. He's like, what if somebody says that you you worship Brian because uh, you look like Brian and same beard, same gray in your beard and everything and ministry like I like to do things outdoors and everything. And then when I called him out on it saying, hey, I was being nice about it. All I asked was, could you find the video? Well, I didn't actually say that I believed that. I just said someone could say it. So... I had my parents mocked, and I just want to throw this out there for brothers and sisters again. When I first started getting into ministry, video ministry, I mentioned the reason I hesitated for a while getting in wasn't because I didn't believe I was ready or God wasn't calling me. I hesitated because, yeah, when I grew a beard, I got gray. A lot of people, I believe, are getting gray in the corners there. A lot of people I've seen that when they start getting gray in their beard, it tends to happen in the corners. Not all the time. But I remember looking, I said, I put on that hat that I like to wear, and I started looking a little, little like Brother Brian, and would people use that against Brian, King James Video Ministries? I didn't want to harm God's ministry or hurt God's ministry in any way. So I knew I'd get an accusation, and I have. When he said people could do it, they have. They've accused me, oh, you're a Brian Dillinger clone, you know. Uh, you're like, you look like Brian Dillinger's brother. And some people say it just to say, hey, you do. Uh, we're brothers in Christ. But some people use that to attack me like I worship him. And I find it crazy that I have said that. Like I said, I got really into the comments under the, the, the video Brian did uh, calling uh, Larson out, Charles Larson. And I got in there and said, hey, you guys are flat out worshiping Larson. And they are because they're making excuses for something he did wrong. They could say, I mean, not one person that believes Charles Lawson is saved and a brother in Christ, not one of them sat there and said, you know what, you're right. What he said was wrong, and it's serious what he said is wrong. I want to see if I can get a hold of him and let him know. I want to see if I can get a hold of somebody who can get a hold of him and see if it was a mistake, see if we could, he'll correct it, um, just to let him know. Correction from the love of a brother to another brother. Not one person did that. 
that, that supports Charles Lawson. They all came out defending him. What he said, eh, it might have been a little bad, but it's not that big of a deal. It is a big deal. Okay, like I said, if Brian came out and said, has come in the flesh, I'd have corrected him under that video in a heartbeat. If there was a house, I think I said that, if there was a house church and I was in a house church with Brother Brian and he got behind wherever he stands to talk and teach and he said that, I would have corrected him on the spot. I wouldn't have been amen in him like most of the people in that video. Amen, amen, amen. I would not be amen in that at all. If Brian came out and said, you know what? I, I was about pre-time of Jacob's trouble, but I, we might go into the time of Jacob's trouble. I would have corrected him under his videos on the spot. People would have said, see, he's a hypocrite. I'd be like, uh, I don't agree with him. I don't know why he's saying that. And I would confront him. I have the ability to confront Brother Brian when I believe he's wrong. I don't have the ability to confront Charles Lawson when he's wrong. But all these people that are just standing for Charles Lawson, some of them have the capability of confronting Charles Lawson, and they won't do it. Because they love their master. I mean, pastor. I'm sorry to say it like that. It's the only way to say it. Okay? Because like I said, and I noticed on there that when I just tried to explain to them, hey, how serious this is, this is serious. And they kept coming back with excuse after excuse after excuse. I got to the point where I did call them out and said they worship Larson, a man. And that man ain't Jesus Christ. That they don't put the word of God above Charles Lawson. And they said they say, well, you don't. You, they always come back to me and accuse me of worshiping Brother Brian. Okay, when I first got saved, I followed Brother Brian's ministry, uh, Sam Gibbs' ministry, and uh, Chick Publications. Those are the three main ones. And then further down the road, I got introduced to Ex Catholics for Christ, and then Brother JT started getting into the ministry and making some videos, and I think Brian Harlow started making some videos too. And, but over the years, like I said, I looked into Sam Gipp, and over the years I started seeing some of his videos, things weren't lining up, and it got to the point where I can't support Sam Gipp anymore. Okay, he's all about the traditions of men. He's hardcore for these Babel buildings. He says you can get saved off these Bible perversions, and I know Brian does too, but that's why I disagree with Brian. I'm like, you look at my life, and I've talked to a lot of brothers and sisters in Christ out there, they'll say that when they got brought to the Bible version issue, and they got their King James Bible, they learned the true gospel, and they got saved. They were false converts. Then you have all these people that they claimed to be saved when they were using those Bible perversions, but they went 5, 10, 15 years without the King James Bible, and they're saved. And it's like, you read the Bible, and it says, Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way, by taking heed thereto according to thy word. There's no change in their life those 15, 5, 10, 15 years. No change. They still look like the world, act like the world. No change. And they won't drop the pride and say, no, you're right, I didn't get saved till I came to the Bible version issue. I learned the true gospel, had God's word in my hand. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know ye have eternal life, and that ye may be able to believe on the name of the Son of God. If you don't have the King James Bible, you can't do either. You have to have God's perfect written word in your hand. So, um, so yeah, so this whole thing about Lawson, the holy point I was making out is that he said it and people were defending him and amening him. They were amening a heresy. They were amening something that's very serious. He was promoting an antichrist spirit. Willingly or unwillingly, he was promoting, intentionally or accidentally, he was promoting an antichrist spirit and it's very seriously serious. Brother Brian says things, I disagree with him, I come up and confront him and disagree with him. The thing people don't seem to understand, and I'm going to skip skipping ahead, is that uh, the things I disagree with Brother Brian on aren't a salvation issue. So, next thing I wanted to talk about real quick, Robert Breaker. Uh, the thing about him lying, Brian did a video about it, and I went through there and I'm like, Listen, I didn't make many comments because at that point I was realizing I was getting into stuff too much and I didn't want to get into it too much as far as fighting with people. But um, people, two things that really irritate me when it comes to breakers, the breaker followers. I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to say it. The breaker followers and the Brian Dinlinger followers. One thing that irritates me is um, there'll be people on there saying, 
Brother Brian, you need to, you know, you need to make amends with Brother Breaker, and you guys just need to get together and shake hands and, and then get back to teaching the Word of God, which is the most important thing. And I look on there, and I had to make a comment. I just had to. I said, you guys are mentally ill. Anyone that says Brother Breaker and says Brother Brian is mentally ill. They both teach a different gospel. If you believe Brian teaches a false gospel, then he's not a brother in Christ. If you think Robert Breaker teaches a false gospel, he's not a brother in Christ. There aren't many paths to heaven, okay? There's only one plan of salvation, only one can be right. And I look under there and I see these people and I just have to say something on the camera. It's very irritating because these people are mentally ill. But sometimes I almost want to say they're lost because the Holy Spirit in them wouldn't say that. They teach two different Gospels. It's like saying someone teaches works-based salvation, he's a brother in Christ. Someone teaches that you can earn salvation with your faith, he's a brother in Christ. And someone teaches that God's the one that saves you, repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, confess both in prayer and call upon the name of the Lord. To, uh, and ask God to save you. He's the one that does the saving. You can't save yourself with your faith, and you can't earn salvation by, uh, you know, outdoing your bad works with good works. We're, but we're all brothers in Christ. You're mentally ill. And that's one thing I noticed under that video, uh, the comment section. These people are mentally ill. I believe they're lost. Anybody that says Brother Brian and Brother Robert Breaker at the same time, we believe they're both brothers, you're lost. You're mentally ill. They teach two different Gospels. Back in the day, um, you had people trying to tell people, uh, when Brother Brian was in ministry, and I first got introduced to him, people were trying to promote Robert Breaker. Oh, Brother Brian's an excellent Bible teacher, King James Bible-believing teacher. And so was Robert Breaker. And I look back and it's like, why were these people doing that? Because Robert Breaker taught a different Gospel. Okay? Uh, they weren't both brothers in Christ. One is, and the other one isn't. Pick and choose, okay? You choose Robert Breaker, you're wrong. I believe you're 100% wrong. He's lost. He's on his way to hell, okay? He doesn't. He took repentance out. I think he took repentance or changed it, so I better not say that. But he took prayer out. But I think he goes through and he doesn't like the, the Romans' road to salvation, but his gospel is that you just believe. So yeah, I guess he did take re repentance out. He's just, you believe. That's it. That's all you do. You believe your faith, you've earned salvation. He doesn't teach the same gospel as Brother Brian does. So that was irritating. I want to just confront and let the brothers and sisters in Christ know my little irritation um, about that. The other thing is, is I hate politics, because that's what it was at Lawson when they said someone could say this about you too, and it's like, that's called politics. I don't play politics. You, someone could say it, you said it. Well, I didn't say it like I believe, doesn't matter, you said it. Okay, I don't play politics. And under Robert Breaker, when he came on and supposedly apologized, he played uh, politics. His whole first paragraph was how Brother Brian lies about him, and that justifies him lying about Brother Brian. Then he sits there and makes an excuse to why he did it before he even apologizes for doing it, lying about Brother Brian. And that whole thing is just politics, and now he's going to stand out there and say, well, I apologized to him and he just didn't accept my apology. It wasn't heartfelt. He didn't mean it. You could tell he didn't mean that he was sorry because of his comment, the whole comment section. Okay? When you're justifying doing it, and then you say, I'm sorry for doing it, you're not sorry. You don't justify it. He should have just came on and said, you know what, you're right. I was wrong in saying that. I got my information mixed up. I was wrong. I'm sorry for doing it. And left it at that. That's true apology. You don't come on and say, well, I'm sorry, but, but you did this. I might have sinned over here, but you sinned over there. Then you're not taking responsibility for your mistake and, the, and for sinning. Okay? So I just wanted to call that out. Um, so yeah, when people get on there, they're going to be saying, well, the Robert Breaker followers, they're going to be, um, well, he apologized, and Brian's just so prideful, and he didn't mean it for one second, okay? You read the comment, and you go into it and be in neutral, saying, okay, let's read it and use our head, okay? And let the Holy Spirit guide us and say, okay, he's making a lot of excuses. He said he's sorry, but then he accuses Brian of doing the same thing and everything. It's like, 
if Brian lied about him, you still don't accuse him of it you, when you're coming forward and saying, I'm sorry. If I lied to someone, I'm going to say I'm sorry, but I'm not going to turn around and say, but people have lied about me. And, and that same person lied about me. You don't do that. That's not a true, sincere apology. You just apologize. Right? Am I saying Brian is not, has done that? I, I can't remember. So I'm not, because I know people on the line, well, Brian's done the same thing where he said he's sorry, but then he turned around and accused them. You don't do that. I, don't, I can't remember if Brian's done that. You don't do that. You just apologize. Owe up to the mistake you made, apologize, and don't make any excuses. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what he did. So, Brother Brian, now we're on Brother Brian. Uh, King James Video Ministries, okay? I don't worship Brother Brian. I watch multiple ministries, okay? I'm sorry that God made me this way. I know people are <laughs> like to attack me because I look this way. I'm sorry, but this is how God made me. I didn't go out of my way. I don't take white out and just white out here and here and then go, you know I don't wear the same clothes, but go hunt down the same clothes Brother Brian wears and, and gets on camera. I don't do that. This is how God made me, okay? And I'm blessed and proud to be who God made me. Mm -hmm. um, proud, I guess not, I used the wrong word, blessed. Okay? I'm happy that I'm here. I'm, ha I'm so blessed that God saved me. But I wanted to throw a few things out that I disagree with Brother Brian real quick. I, I might do a study where I get really in depth, but I don't think it's necessary. The only study I probably will do really in depth is the first thing I disagree with Brother Brian on is Christmas. I don't believe it's a we can agree to disagree thing. And like I said, I'll do a Bible study on it someday. I'm okay with celebrating, well, kind of. Like I said, I, I looked into it. When I, I, the, people always say the number one video that... My favorite teaching that Brother Brian's done is such and such. Well, no one's ever said the worst video I've seen Brian do. So I, I might be the first. So I think the worst uh, video study that Brian ever did for me is Christmas video. I think it was the worst video he's ever done. Okay? He didn't go through and show every side and debunk every side and say, okay, December 25th, its origins are based off a pagan holiday. People back in the past were not celebrating... I mean, the first thing on December 5th was the pagan holiday before the holiday of celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. And he didn't go through. Um, I was face palming a lot in that video. Like I said, I might go into it and do a Bible study on, you know, the proper way to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. And you'll be shocked. I looked into it and studied it. When I watched Brian's video and was face palming, I was on the fence. You know, I was in the military a lot and I really didn't celebrate holidays that much. I was away from family a lot. And then I came home, and then the family just, you know, wants to go out to eat, and that's it. You know, for Christmas, everybody gets together and goes out to eat. Are you done? <laughs> I'm too close. <laughs> the bird seat's right there. Um, for Thanksgiving, they just want to go out to eat. It's not a get-together, do a Bible study, you know, talk about the Lord, be thankful for the things in your life. Um, you're supposed to do that 24-7, but... You know what I'm saying? I just haven't been for holidays that much, and when I watched that video, I was kind of on the fence, you know, if you want to, you're not. But when I actually looked into it and studied the issue, uh, and went into it with an open mind, you know, saying, Holy Spirit, tell me what to see, instead of going in there seeing what I want to see. And um, that verse, I think it's being, like I said, I'll do a study, I don't want to go into it too much. Um, but that verse where they say, uh, one man esteemeth another uh, one day... Go away! Thank you, Victoria. <laughs> Thank you. Victoria scared away. Um, one man esteemeth one day above another. One man esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be persuaded in his own mind. I hope I'm not. I'm not saying 100 percent right. If you look up, if you look at the context, it's talking about the Levitical laws. It's talking about all the days, like the feast days, the days of unleavened bread, Passover, the uh, Sabbath day. They had Jews, because I believe Romans is just an overview of, of um, Paul's ministry, and then you go to the churches and that's everything he did, because it doesn't say everything he did in Romans, but you go to the Pauline epistles and that's everything he did in the past, because he's writing letters to these churches that he went to in Romans, I believe. But what's going on here is like what's going on in the book of Galatians. You know, you have, uh, what is it, Acts, and then Galatians. And then Ephesians. In Galatians, where you have these Jews coming in trying to bring Christians.
Christians back under the law saying you have to believe in Jesus and keep the law to be saved in this dispensation. And the whole context of that verse is saying it has to do with the Levitical laws. Okay? It's not talking about you can celebrate any holiday you want. I mean, they've got Sodomite Day. Is it okay to celebrate that? Halloween, is it okay to celebrate that? Let every man be persuaded in his own mind. Uh, what about Easter? Pagan origin. Halloween, pagan origin. Brian did an amazing video on Halloween, Halloween proving how it's pagan, and he also showed in there how Christians, so-called Christians, the Babel buildings, are trying to Christianize it. You have a lot of bad things out there that they're trying to Christianize so they can be like the world, look like the world, act like the world, and be like the world. So, one of the big things I disagree, I just want to throw it out there, I disagree with Brian on Christmas. Is it a salvation issue? It's not a salvation issue. Okay. And I'm just throwing a few things off the top of my head. Uh, 24 elders. I disagree with Brother Brian when he said, and here's the thing I disagree with him on, mainly. He used to say, this is my opinion, this is what I've looked into, and this is what I kind of believe, and I, I can't be dogmatic about it, I can't prove it hardcore, we'll find out when we get there, but I believe it's two from every, every boundary on the Gentile side. And I was okay with it. I disagree with him, I have my own theory going through Scripture, because I can back mine up with Scripture, um, but it's, I can't be dogmatic on it. We'll find out when we get there. But Brian came out in the video saying, this is, this is truth. And I'm like, okay, then um, I disagree with that. Okay? Um, my belief going off scripture is that if you actually do the study, you'll notice that there's 24 total boundaries in the King James Bible. 24. You have 12 boundaries on the Gentile side, and you have 12 boundaries on the Jewish side. Okay? Um, you have, the, you have 13 total nations, you have 12 uh, Gentile nations, and you have the Jewish nation. Within the Jewish nation, there's 12 tribes. There's 12 more boundaries that are separated. How do we know they're still there? Because you read Revelation, you know, the 12 tribes. I uh, can't, remember, can't remember how many, but they're sealed in the forehead of each tribe. Mm -hmm. So you know, when you do the study, there's 24 boundaries. You don't have two kings that's in charge over the same thing. You don't have two kings that's over the same Gentile nation. Okay, that doesn't make sense to me. And like I said, I'm not saying Brian's wrong in his belief that that could be what it is. I was just against the him coming out all of a sudden saying that's absolute truth. When you read in Revelation, because he keeps saying it over and over, um, uh, redeemed by thy blood out of every kindred, race, tongue, uh, that includes the, Je the Jewish people, and I believe the Old Testament saints were redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. They weren't saved. The plan of salvation wasn't uh, rep uh, repentance towards God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, death, burial, and resurrection. It's just the sacrifices in the Old Testament could only cover their sins. It couldn't take them away. Jesus still had to die so his blood could wash their sins away. When Jesus died, he went down to Abraham's bosom to get him. Okay, I died. My blood can wash your sins away. Now you can go to heaven. So they're redeemed out of the blood of Jesus Christ also. Uh, people have done teachings where they believe that 300 million or whatever amount that's in heaven, what if that included Old Testament saints? So you have Jewish people there, yet not one single elder is a Jewish person. I don't believe that. But once again... That's not a salvation issue. I disagree with Brother Brian, but it's not a salvation issue. Uh, I've always, we'll get into what I believe salvation issues, the major doctrines which I believe are salvation issues. The other thing I disagree with Brother Brian on, uh, like I said, just throwing three things out there real quick. Interracial marriage is fornication. He did a study on it. He didn't really do much of a study. He did kind of a study, but he didn't compare Scripture with Scripture with Scripture with Scripture. Labor in the Word. Um, I disagree with him on that. Okay, fornication is, is being with somebody outside of marriage, sex outside of marriage. I'm just going to say it. Okay, so when you read the Old Testament, there's the Jew Jewish people that are married and it calls them estranged wives. It's another way of today we say interracial marriage. They says estranged wives and they had to put them away. 
Well, if they had to put them away, that means it's not fornication, it's marriage. Okay, that totally debunked what Brian taught. One thing, I don't know if I'll ever do a teaching on it, is there's two types of fornication in the Old Testament. There's two types of fornication today. There's two types of fornication in, you know, the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, there's spiritual fornication and there's physical fornication. Sometimes in the Old Testament it'll mention spiritual for, it'll mention fornication because what the Jewish people were doing is they were marrying, they were bringing these women in from other kindreds, and those women were bringing in false gods and getting the Jewish people to worship false gods, and it became spiritual fornication. So those are the two things you've got to be careful with when grabbing from the Old Testament. But like I said, I disagree with them. I do agree with him on segregation versus integration. I do agree with them that you should try to marry in you, within your own kindred. But if you're lost and you're in married and you both get saved, what does the Bible say your responsibility is as a husband? You are married. It's not fornication. You are married. What does the Bible say now is your responsibility as a husband? You need to start lining up with the Bible. You weren't lined up with the Bible before you got saved and you're interracially married. Now you need to line up with the Bible how you're supposed to be a husband. And the wife has to line up with the Bible on how she's supposed to be a godly wife. Okay? So I disagree with Brother Brian on that. So I just wanted to throw those things out. Just like I said, a sit and talk. So I want to talk with the brethren. Uh, you can make your comments. I'm going to get my attacks that are going to come. <laughs> I laugh because it's just you can't get away from it today. Um, people say you're lost and you don't have anything to do with them. If they do a false teaching, by all means, um, make a video debunking what they're teaching based on a Bible study with the brethren. You don't just sit there and call somebody out and make videos that's all about drama. You know, you actually call them out and make, make a Bible study out of it. A lot of Brian's old videos where he called uh, Steve Anderson out uh, King James Video Ministries and all these false teachers, he turned it into a Bible study and I loved it. Um, so, my best advice for that if you're in ministry is when you've come across somebody that's lost, a servant of Satan, and they're preaching falsely, whenever you point them out and call them out, turn it into a Bible study and warn, when you're warning the brothers and sisters in Christ, teach them at the same time. It's a great opportunity. Um, God's opening a door to that. So, okay, um, now a couple things on here. Uh, uh, notifications. I'm still not getting any notifications when people make comments under my videos. And sometimes I'm not even getting notifications when I make a comment on, on a video and other people make comments. So my YouTube page is just, I've already, there's no way to open tickets. And I think they did that purposely. All I can do is make a, give a feedback, and I've given tons of feedbacks over and over. I even went to the main page where they talk about notifications, and I left a comment on there saying, I'm not getting notifications. And I told them, the boxes are checked, everything's set up properly, and then they came back and asked, is everything set up properly? And it's like they didn't even read my comment. And I said, everything's re filled out properly, I need this fixed. And they come back with, well, just open up a feedback. And I'm like, I've opened a million feedbacks. I need it fixed. But they won't fix it. So bottom line, if I miss, even for the enemies of the ministry, see, he just ignored me, therefore I'm right. I'm not getting the comments. You, they're still going to use that. But for mainly, this is focused for brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, if you make a comment and it takes a while for me to get back to you, it just it's so time-consuming. And to every night, try to go over most recent videos. And then there's people that make comments on older, older videos. And trying to keep up, it's becoming a nightmare to me. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just not getting notifications. Um, some of the notifications are lagging, which I understand that part. Um, YouTube's having a lot of problems. But I'm not ignoring you, brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, it's just sometimes I miss a comment because I'm just not getting told. And I can't keep up with all the videos that the Lord's blessing me with being able to do for the ministry. Um... I need prayer. Fire, prayer. Okay. I always need prayer for my eyes. I thank you. Some days it's doing great. Some days it's not. Um, but I went fishing, salmon fishing, the last two days, and it was exhausting. Um, Military-wise, I had my body trained to get up at a certain hour, and I could change it. So if my shift changed, and I did the evening shift or the night shift, uh, I could still train myself to get up at a certain time. And ever since I had that major heat stroke in Okinawa, and it turned into a seizure disorder, 
Anytime I know I have to get up first thing in the morning, because we were getting up at 5 in the morning, um, I have a hard time sleeping the night before. I keep waking up thinking it's time, or it takes me a while to fall asleep. So I was very tired. But that first night, our first day we went fishing, I forgot to take uh, Dramamine, uh, motion sickness. And I started getting seasick. And I've gotten seasick before, but I've never had this happen to me before. My hands started like seizing up. I don't know if you can see that, but it's like it was seizing up and it felt like my thumb was touching my fingers even though they weren't touching. And both of my hands started doing it and they had to take me in. And I laid in the bed of the truck and I just laid there and slept for about an hour. And it went away. So I don't know if that's something new. Um, I'll be looking into it. But I could definitely use prayer because I'm praying that it's nothing, you know, too crazy. But it's, it was based off, but I've never got, done that. When I get seasick, I get upset with the stomach. I get very tired, nauseous, and I've even thrown up before. Um, the next day I took my Dramamine and I was just fine. We were out on the water. Um, and if I get the picture in time before I put this video out, I'll show it. But praise the Lord, I got my first salmon. <laughs> it was a blessing from the Lord. And it was fun, the thing that was there is you had them, I probably, I won't go fishing with the guy again, but the guy, he has, he started cussing here and there, he just, he cusses, he was in the military, he used the Lord's name in vain a few times, and I'm like, I'm not going to go fishing with him again. But he was sitting there like, uh, the one guy said he prayed to the gods so we get some fish, and he's like, yeah, he started making fun of Catholics, and he's like, I said so many Hail Marys and everything, and I'm sitting there in the boat, and I'm like, Lord, you know what, if we don't catch any fish, praise the Lord. Uh, this is bad, I'm, I don't want to be in this atmosphere anymore, and I'm not. And like I said, I just said, you know, Lord, if it's your will, I said it out loud, Lord, if it's your will, let us catch some fish today. And when I caught that fish, I was giving God the glory the whole time. And those guys were like, eh. And I'm like, I won't go fishing with the one guy again. Um, but yeah, I caught a fish. It was a blessing out of all of that. So now I've got some salmon, and now I've got to learn how to cook salmon. I've, lo I've, I've had salmon, and if you didn't catch it, cook it right, it's got a very fishy taste. And that's why some people, a lot of people don't like salmon. And I just never tried it, because that's what people said, and I'm not into fishy taste. But then I had someone cook it right, and it was amazing. Didn't have a fishy taste or nothing. So if it's cooked right, it's amazing, brothers and sisters in Christ. If it's not cooked right, then that can be said about anything almost. So, but yeah, my health, my eyes. Uh, I'm working. I still can only work for about an hour, and then I start to overheat. I had to take a break, and um, uh, I just start sweating hardcore. And that's what I did before I had that heat stroke. And I'm. If I stayed out there in the sun and kept working for three or four hours straight, I'd have a heat stroke. I almost know I will. So I'm trying to get a lot of physical work done. Um, so that's what I'd like to get some prayer from the brothers and sisters in Christ. And I'm praying for those out there that have physical problems and are stressed out by lost family members, uh, especially if you're married to them. I'm still praying for, I pray I get the rent, Alex, brother Alex, with his situation with his family. So please keep praying for him. A lot of, uh, had a sister in Christ talk about how their kids, they raised them in the admonition of the Lord, but the world got a hold of them, and they took off, and they're going with the world. They don't want anything to do with Jesus Christ, and I have a daughter that's the same way. I'm always praying for you. Um, I always pray that the God, God gives your children, and my daughter, every opportunity to get saved, but I pray for comfort for you, because it's not easy being a parent, having your kids go out there knowing that if they die, they're going to hell, and if they're still alive and they make it through the time of Jacob's trouble, we're going to be going out to get them and, and bring them into Jesus Christ. And they're going to get judged and cast into hell, especially if they took the mark of the beast and worship the beast. They go hand in hand. So um, one of the projects I'm doing, um, praise the Lord. I, I just want to because when you, some, God does something amazing for you, if you hear that noise, what that noise is, is it's a... Uh, Chipmunk. <laughs> I've learned they make that noise. I got a chipmunk from that side of the deck that'll climb up on the deck on the railing and go and get food out of my bird feeder. And I got a chipmunk on that side and they'll make that noise to see if anything will move to see if there's anything dangerous around. So he's making that noise for some reason. But he's down this deck side. So hopefully that's not overpowering the mic. So, But I, I just want to say praise the Lord. He's got me back out of deck. A debt except for the house. I'm still in debt to the house. It's a mortgage. It's like paying rent, but still I'm trying to 
going to be working on that. But he's got me out of debt. And some money's come in, praise the Lord, for the ministry. So one of the videos I'm going to be doing is I'm going to get a, another Bible just like the one I have. And I'm going to get some pencils. And I'm going to do a quick video showing some outline and showing you how I do things. And I had someone mock me once for doing pencil writing saying, why do you do that? Eventually the whole thing's going to be highlighted. And I'm like, praise the Lord. But I do that because when you open the Bible, there's a lot of times now when Brother Brian does a video or Brother JT does a video and he says, turn here, I flip it open and there's it's highlighted. I know exactly where they're going because of, because of all the teachings, you study the word like you're commanded to and everything. And when I do my Bible reading in the morning and Bible reading in the evening, I'll see those highlighted and I'll remember studies. It's not enough just to read the Bible, you've got to study the Bible. When I memorize scripture, I tell brothers and sisters in Christ, do cue cards, but it's not enough to just memorize the scripture. I had a lost homeless man that was wanting money, and he saw my um, Bible verse magnet that I have on my truck, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. He quoted the whole chapter in the King James Bible. But he ain't saved. I got to talking with him, there's no changed life. He just loves living however he wants and smoking cigarettes, and I'm not judging from the outward appearance, it's his attitude towards it, okay? And I, I normally don't do it, but I gave him a, I gave him a Bible, I do this, I gave him a gospel track as a, mo, of, as a um, uh, bookmark, and I told him, you need to read this, it's a great gospel track, and I gave him five bucks. And I went driving around, because I still had a lot of errands to make, and I went to the dollar store, and when I drove into the parking lot for the dollar store, I saw him sitting over with another buddy, and he had a big bottle of, I think it was beer, like a glass bottle. And I'm like, you know, memorizing scripture is not enough. You need to know what they mean and do your best to follow them and take them to heart. It's not enough to have them up here. you got to have them down here, too. So I want to do that. It's a project now that I've got, I was blessed with some money, so I'm going to buy, I like nice Bibles, um, because I might start using two Bibles for Bible studies. Um, but I want to do that. Uh, I'm going to be investing in a marker board. God's given me a great idea, so I'm going to invest in a marker board. They're not, some of them are cheap, some of them are expensive. But I want a good marker board. I'm going to put it on the wall somewhere, and I want to be able to do, there's some studies I want to do in the next few weeks. So I'm going to be looking into that. Mike, remember the video I did, Brothers and Sister Christ. I want to be getting a mic so I can do some outdoor studies, pray the Lord. Um, one of the things for prayer for my health is it's hard for me to stand in one place for long periods of time. Uh, my back starts hurting. I remember there was a Bible study I did on video and I kept it and I put it out where I'm on my driveway and I'm trying to stand there and talk and I'm leaning from side to side and kind of moving my feet, like shuffling my feet. And without knowing it, I was slowly moving closer and closer to the camera and praise the Lord I didn't get so close that my head got cut off. But um, I have a hard time standing in one place, so I'll probably do a lot of ones where I'm sitting down somewhere. So, and trying to do some Bible studies outside. And uh, so I'm going to be looking into that. And the only other thing for an update for the ministry is, I, I thought about it, but I don't know. I just want to know what the brothers and sisters from Christ think about. I was thinking that I check emails that I get from brothers and sisters in Christ. I love hearing how people are doing, uh, prayer requests. I love hearing testimonies. Remember, testimony, I, I'm not telling you what your testimony should be, but the outline should be basically your lost life before you got saved, um, how you became broken, the true gospel, because when you give a testimony, you're witnessing, you're also um, minister of reconciliation. It's a chance to preach the gospel, too. So make sure that it's the true gospel, repentance towards God, that's when you come broken, and talk about how you, God broke you or how you came broken. Um, and then your life after salvation, you know, how God changed you, the changed life, you know, the great things God has done in your life since he saved you. That, to me, is the best testimony ever. So I love getting those. But part of me was thinking, I like to set out on the deck every evening when I can. Even during the winter, I got my blankets on and I'm wrapped up with the thing and I'm sitting out here listening to the Bible study or listening to some music and I'm still looking out and everything. And I got to thinking it would be nice if, you know, I could sit there and read letters from brothers and sisters in Christ. So I just want to know what you guys think. Uh, it will cost money for me to get a P.O. box. And like I said, I've had people offer to give me money, donate some money to the ministry. Uh, God's blessed me. Okay, I have an income, and it's more than enough. 
I mean, if we get, the thing is, I keep thinking, what if we get to hard times? I might ask, but if we get to hard times, that means you guys are in hard times also. Uh, good ministries to donate to is help Brother JT out, you know. Him, he's doing the books. He's actually doing physical work for the Lord. He wrote a book. I'll do a book review on it eventually. It's, it's summertime. It's, I spend most of my time reading the Bible during the summer. I don't. I got a whole pile of books. I usually get to books during the su uh, winter when I'm, it rains here a lot and I'm mostly inside. So um, I've got his book and I've been reading through it and I'm almost done with it. And I'll do a book uh, review on it. Um, but he's actually physically doing things for the Lord. He made a game, a Bible game. Um, he wrote that book. He's writing another book. Um, he's a good person I'd suggest, hey, uh, help him out by buying his book. Um, uh, buy the game. Uh, I don't know. I don't get a commission on all this. Uh, if you want to, donate a little money to him. If I don't know. But like I said, donate to ministries that need the money that God hasn't blessed as much as he has me. Uh, King James Video Ministries, full-time ministry, donate to them. Um, gosh, it's getting hard to find people. Uh, I, I kind of disagree with some things Chick Publication does. I still, there's times where I buy a collection of books and, and send them to people when they need them, or I'll buy a Bible online and send it, have it mailed to the person. So part of my ministry, I do spend a lot of my money sometimes on that. Uh, uh, it's hard to find a God. I think I found some gospel tracts from um, Chick Publications where they don't say God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They don't have images of Jesus Christ or the the Trinity, not the Godhead. Their images are the Trinity. But it's hard to find gospel tracts nowadays. There was one place I got some good gospel tracts, but they were thin paper. That um, a lot of places I like to leave them. They could get, might get a little wet or something. But um. It's hard to find good ministries to donate to, uh, to, to be part of that ministry by donating to them. And remember, it's, you don't have to donate. You're not to get your, you're not, what is it? You're not to give out a necessity, but with a cheerful, cheerful heart. Cheerful heart, if I can say it right. Um, so if you're hurt for, hurting for money, don't feel bad if you can't donate to people, okay? You can donate with your prayers, okay? You can donate with your fellowship, sharing what the Lord has shown you uh, under the comment sections of our videos. Um, you know, but um, I just want you to know God has blessed me. I have an income. So I just want your thoughts on a P.O. box. And if I do do one, it's not for people to donate money. It's just I'd like to, you know, the old-fashioned way, letters. You can type out the letter and print it out or, you know, write it in hand. My handwriting is horrible. So I always have to type my notes out. Um... And I wrote this down, but even here, if someone saw this, they'd be like, well, what's that word? What's, what's that? <laughs> My handwriting's bad. But I was thinking I'd love to do that. I just don't want to be paying a monthly fee for a P.O. box and then not getting anything any month. Um, so uh, just an idea to throw that out there. So uh, pray for Brother JT. He's coming out with, he's, he's working on a good book. Uh, and he's like I said, he's doing physical work for the Lord. He's not just, he's not so, he's not even asking for money. But even if he did, I just want you to know he's working hard for the Lord. He's making videos. He's doing physical work. There's times where I'd like to write a book. I've got some outlines and stuff like that. But he's actually getting a lot done for the Lord too. So um, you can like, there's a lot of different ways you can donate without throwing money. Okay. Yeah, that costs money for his book. Yeah, it, I. I you can donate with your, your your time, you know, when you watch videos and you support good King James Video Ministries by referring people you believe are saved to it. I link uh, the gospel message that Brother Brian did to a lot of people. Um, I'll link a lot of the messages. That's me supporting uh, Brother Brian's ministry, King James Video Ministries. I'll do the same thing with JT. Uh, I bought JT's book, <laughs> and it's a good book. And the thing that will be part of it of the book review is there's a lot of things in there I didn't know. I mean, I do, I'm not really up to speed on all the false religions and false beliefs. Um, so there's things in there I didn't even know uh, that was out there, and I was shocked that they're out there. But then again, I got to thinking about it. Well, this is the last days, and things are so out there. The bio, our studies, our group uh, direction, the studies that we've been doing about you know carnally minded versus spiritually minded. Uh, the true life of a Christian truly being saved, the true gospel, 
and uh, getting into Corinthians where it talks about how Satan uh, that has the serpent beguiled Eve. People were beguiling and deceiving the church of Corinth and they were coming in preaching another Jesus, bestowing another spirit, receiving another spirit and preaching another gospel and we'll get into that study eventually but uh, yeah everything's falling apart so I'm gonna go ahead and end this just want to do a quick uh, talk with the brethren just it's a sit down talk I didn't have the energy to walk because I still have to go water the garden and I still have to get down there and keep attacking that tree it's a big tree and I have a battery operated chainsaw I showed in one of the videos and um, it's doing good it's just two batteries um, I think the blades getting dull so cutting through the huge trunk part of the tree cutting it in small sections it's not lasting as long um, so uh, and like I said I also can't work that long so I wasn't gonna do a walk and talk I was gonna do a sit down and talk so I love my brothers and sisters in Christ and I'm praying for you uh, keep me in your prayers um, keep Bible believing God fearing ministries in your prayers and uh, grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you and my love for you which is in Christ Jesus I've got some great studies coming out about being in Christ Jesus so I will see you in the next video